And the only way we can get rid of, of one, uh, say, habit of action is to begin to develop another habit of action that cuts across it. And so more and more, now this gets to be the strong thing, and this begins to weaken, you see. Until now, this operates automatically, and this is, is beyond operation. It's sunk down beyond normal recall. Do you, do you understand what I'm saying? That's the only way we renew. That's why I said, put off the old, put on the new. We put on the new by just beginning to do the new things. Little by little, then the old sinks into oblivion. Because we're putting on the new. Because we're doing something. Now we go back to Leviticus, and we read, that here's another cleansing. It's not that the first cleansing is not true. That holy seed is now here, but we're still sinners. Now isn't that really what you actually find in practical reality, isn't it? You know something's real, and, and yet you know that it's not what you want it to be. There's still things you wish weren't there. And not just one or two things wish it were, but it's not. And so, now that you're pronounced clean, you start washing yourself. You see what I mean? And this we are told to do. That which we couldn't do is done for us, but that which we can do, God asks us to do. When this evil nature was in me, I couldn't break a habit because I didn't want to, really. But now a new nature's come, I want to, now I can. It'll take some work. It'll take some of real effort and determination, but I can. And that's the big difference. That's the big difference. Before, you couldn't. Now you can, but it won't be easy. We will see. The first thing, and this is just to begin to live with the saints, mind you. He that is to be cleansed shall wash his clothes. In Scripture, clothes speak of our outer actions. We begin to clean up. You know what I mean? Now, this is just the outer thing, just so we can sit together and, and, and rejoice together and, and, and not be ashamed, either of them of me or me of myself. And so we begin to clean up a realm of the outer actions. I stopped reading filthy things or going bad places or, or doing the things that just plain obviously that even a decent upright person wouldn't really do it. You know what I mean? Now there's some things that would be pretty deep will take longer than other things. You know, there's, when any of you people have done any washing of clothes know that some spots are pretty hard to get out. Other things just wash out in one good washing, don't they? Well, we'll forget about the spots now. We'll just get this, this first washing, see? And so, we get that word, and so things, the outer actions, are not like they used to be. But you have to do that. You have to begin to turn off some things and begin to turn on some other things. Your outer actions begin to clean up. You begin to come to church instead of going to pub. Mm -hmm. Different things like that. Always really not all that hard to do because you really want to do it. The first washing isn't that hard. And so uh, you begin to work on it, and you've got to take it down there to water, and the water of the Word, and say, hey, that's what it's called, and begin to read the Word, and say, hey, I didn't know that was in the book. Well, I guess I better stop that. I didn't really realize that. It was all that bad. And, and then we read another scripture, or someone preaches a sermon, or someone's, you know, and we begin to wash it. Then we clean up the outside. But then we have to do more than that. He washes his clothes and shave off all his hair. Now, hair speaks of the dead works of the flesh. So there's no life in here. It, it comes from life, but it isn't alive. You know what I mean? It's that which comes out from us, but it's, it's dead works. It doesn't produce, there's no real life factor in it. The scripture speaks several times about the dead works of the flesh. Doing things but there's no life in it. That can be preaching a sermon, couldn't it? That can be singing a song. Have you ever sung a song and there was no life in it as far as you were concerned? Hmm? You're just doing your thing in church. Just doing your thing. Well, that's, that's what hair refers to. It's just a dead work. It's a work, but it's, it's nothing in it. There's no life in it. 
And he says, cut that off. Get that all cut off. Pray a prayer. Have you gone to, to, to get along with the Lord and take the Bible and you read it and you can hardly stay awake and you say a prayer. And it's a dead work of the flesh, isn't it? It's a, great, it's a great idea. It looks pretty. Hair looks pretty. People spend lots of time, some people do, and just getting their hair off pretty done. But it doesn't in life, in it? It looks good. I know one man, he actually had calluses on his knees. He prayed four hours every day. And as far as spiritual life concerned, he was a dead dodo. It was all just empty words. I had a friend in Argentina went into a so they said there was a charismatic move in a certain uh, group, I've forgotten the name of them, a certain Catholic group. So we joined them to see what's going on there. They got up at three o'clock and they, they were out there on the porch kneeling and praying and saying their prayers and he got up there with them and knelt and he said, my knees got so sore. And he was there till seven o'clock in the morning. I guess you only have calluses. Put in a life in it. Dead works of the flesh. Just cut it all off. Anything that hasn't got life in it, just, just don't reach for it. Just cut it off. And then he goes further. And he wash himself in water. Not only the outer actions, but that which is underneath the outer actions. See, clothes are to hide us, aren't they? We hide behind clothes. Those are, and we hide behind our outer actions. How many times you've done one thing to hide another thing? Hmm? How many times you've said one thing to hide what you're really thinking? And so you don't only get after get the clothes washed, but you also get what's inside of the clothes washed. Hmm? And that's something you've got to do. Now, all this was done for you, but this is not done for you. This is something now we have to go to work on. And so, this man washes his clothes, and he says on prayer, and he, he washes himself. And then, after that, it says that he may be clean, and... After that, he shall come into the camp and shall tarry abroad out of his tent seven days. Now he can join the camp of the Holy Ones. Now he can be a member of the church. Now he can consider himself one of the body. He's going to work to take care of washing and cleansing. The work inside's already been done. Now the work outside's been done. And he comes in and joins in the camp. But, what it says... He can't come into his tent yet. Now, that means two things. First, it means his own, his own possessions, his own tent. But I see another meaning in this. The, 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 the tabernacle was called a tent, wasn't it? In other words, he still wasn't ready to really come into the presence of God. If you go back, remember, we come into his courts with uh, uh, praise, into his gates with thanksgiving, his courts with praise. Um, that's where the congregation came up on the feast days. They'd come singing and dancing and waving the palms. And they'd come up to the big feast days. But they didn't come on into the court. That was just outside. They didn't come up that far. But to come on inside, there had to be a Levite. There had to be some consecration. There had to be a deeper work. You know what I mean? 